One of the problems we are frequently running into, especially in our Flux applications, is that the same request is made multiple times. Um, a given view might fire off an action, and we find out that that action, um, I don't know, that the view re-renders or it gets a props, uh, will receive props, sorry, and the component updates and it calls the same thing over and over again. Uh, which hammers the backend servers if those actions result in API calls. So one of the techniques we've been investigating to solve this problem is caching at this API layer. Um, so sometimes this involves the actions actually calling into what more or less looks like a data model. Maybe that model has a get and a create and, that, and your typical CRUD operations. Um, or maybe the actions called directly into the API. And that's how we've kind of been working in this project. So I just want to show you a quick example of how we're handling that and how we solve some of the problems. So um, inside of this API.js that you'll find inside of the Canvas starter app, uh, there's we've added this cache get method. Um, we'll actually need to update several of our pieces of code with this new cache get, but uh, cache get is asynchronous. You give it the URL, you give it a key, and the key is the value, the constant's gonna be dispatched. Um, and then you can optionally give it a refresh. If you tell it to refresh, even if it finds the data in cache, it will still attempt to make a call to the server. But there's a, a difference between what we're doing here and what we've done in the past. Uh, in this situation, because the actions um, are essentially asynchronous. The view will call an action and then they don't care what happens next. Uh, they just let the actions go off and, and do their thing. Uh, the actions can then call this cache get method, which essentially happens twice. So the first time it will return data from the cache, if it finds data in the cache, to the action so that it can be dispatched, or in this case, um, this do cache request will actually handle the dispatching of the of the data for you. And then if you pass it the refresh, it's gonna call next and do it again after an API call is successfully made. So um, let's take a look at this do cache request. So here we have the do cache request. It's a generator function. Um, that yields values that have been cached. We cache based on the URL. Uh, and then after making the, the URL call, we also generate um, this pending request method right here. That uh, is the actual call that's gonna be made to the server, which we turn into a promise that we can return. Um, and then we dispatch once that promise is completed. So I realize that this method is a little hard to read, probably a little hard to parse. Um, if you spend some time kind of reading through the code and playing with it, it becomes a little bit easier to understand what's going on here. But all that you really need to know is that now, instead of calling get, you can call cache get. And if you call cache get, give it a URL, give it a key, it will make the one call to the server, subsequent calls will come out of the cache, and if you give it the refresh, not only will subsequent calls come out of the cache, but they will also make a, a second dispatch with fresh data from the server, which is important sometimes. Um, it is, uh, this is really more for Jaden. Um, I had to add this set timeout, and I can probably set this value to zero. Uh, what I found is frequently these methods, the, the action gets called inside of a current dispatch. Uh, that happens whenever, let's see, we have these situations where, let me find one, where inside of component will receive props, um, we are calling an action. Well, that happens inside of a current dispatch and if you immediately return data from the cache and call dispatch response again, then it will cause errors because the dispatcher will say you can't dispatch while you're already dispatching. So 
I went and did a little bit of research into um, micro tasks. And it turns out that by calling set timeout here, we can make this happen asynchronously. So it will complete the previous dispatch and then it will call the dispatch response in another um, loop, essentially. So then it's not in a dispatch. So far this has worked. Um, I need to do some more testing. We'll keep running this inside of the projects that are using this code and we'll try to get this to, uh, to function correctly. Okay, so that's just really quick how you use this cache git. Um, you can see some of the techniques that we've talked about before in our daily training where this is an async method. Uh, this is a generator function up here. And then we have yield going on inside of here. So essentially yield lets us return multiple times. Uh, and then we've got this while loop. So as long as response, as long as the response returns a not done, um, that's what yield returns. It returns a, a hash with a value and a, well, a value with the data that you return when you yield plus um, a done key with a true or a false. So as long as that stays false, you can just keep asking next and the generator will keep kicking out um, new values. So that's how we handle the get data from the cache the first time, get data from the API the second time. Uh, essentially, you return data twice. All right. Any questions? Uh, Justin. Yes. You can also, if you don't pass a key, it just returns that generator function and you can do stuff with it. Yes. So if you do not want, um, if you don't want the do cache request to handle the dispatch for you, then you can pass a, a key of null and it won't dispatch anything. Then you can get a reference to the generator function and and then you can do whatever you need to with it. So that, that can be handy if you have a really complex action that maybe you need to call, you know, multiple times call the API or something like that. All right, any other questions? Okay, thank you much.